The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Brittany Warner here with realagriculture.com. Welcome back to another episode of our Canola School. Joined once again by Jaden Woodsparrow, who's the agronomy lead for GMAX. Thanks again for joining us today, Jaden. You bet. Well, today we are going to be talking about swathing versus straight cutting. Uh, first and foremost, run us through, give us some cliff notes and summarize the different types of varieties and which is meant for each kind of method. Yeah, so when you're looking at picking a, a variety, there will be some that are rated to be able to straight cut and there will be some that are rated to swath. And then there's, to muddle the waters a little bit more, there's some that are uh, considered delayed swathing. So um, there are a variety where you have the option to straight cut, but if you decide to go that way, you're going to want to get them out of the field as soon as they're ready. So um, when you're going between different uh, canola uh, companies, um, they have different ratings within their own company um, on what is considered a straight cut variety versus a swath variety. So you just have to be careful when you're comparing companies. Um, the Canola Council has recently come out with a uh, pod shatter rating scale to try and um, have a generic scale that everyone can use so you can compare across co uh, companies when you're thinking about buying a straight cut versus a swath variety. So. And what, what's the difference between those plants and varieties that would make them more suitable for swathing versus straight cutting? Yeah, so just uh, when, when you're getting a straight cut variety, those pods um, are going to hold together much longer when they're ripe. Um, they're not going to break open nearly as easily. So uh, when a wind comes through or um, even as you're combining them, those pods are not going to break open and lose seeds to the ground. Whereas a swath variety doesn't have those genetics built in. And so um, those, if you leave that uh, variety to ripen in the field, those pods will split open on their own in heat and as they dry down and you'll lose yield from that. All right, and now when producers are going about trying to decide on which variety to use for their operations, what should they be considering to make these decisions outside, of course, of what machinery you have available? Yeah, so... Um, Big things you want to consider are uh, how bushy that plant is um, and how how well knit together that crop is going to be. Um, I mean, if you're hitting the plant stand target of five to seven plants per square foot, that, that shouldn't be much of an issue, but um, then you're just really looking at how, how well those pods hold on to the seeds. So um, as you're talking to your canola variety companies, um, if you have a chance to get out in the field and look at them yourself, um, that's a really good thing to be able to see um, how well those pods are holding on to the seeds in the field. Um, yeah, compared to what you're used to and what you feel comfortable with. For sure. Now, do, does any consideration, should, anybody, should any consideration be given to your climate, your soil type, anything like that to determine which variety that you want to put on farm? Definitely. So um, the biggest thing there would be uh, maturity. Um, you're not going to want, you know, if you get in the northern regions of Saskatchewan, you're not going to want a long maturity variety, even if it can hold on to its pods, because you're going to have a heck of a time getting that in the bin before, before winter comes. Um, something else to consider is, is how the greener it is and the stronger the pod chatter trade is, the harder it's going to be to combine as well. It, it just takes more horsepower and more time to break open all those pods. Um, so that's a big consideration. Um, as you get in more southern regions of Saskatchewan, the maturity isn't uh, as big of a concern. But, um, you know, when you're considering your soil type and picking a variety, uh, generally a sandy or soil will bring in a crop sooner um, than a heavy clay soil just because it runs out of moisture a little sooner and that crop matures a little bit quicker. So that, that's something else to consider when you're talking about maturity. Now, arguably talking about straight cutting, it does seem like it provides less risk to the producer as far as losing some of that yield due to heat or wind. Run us through some pros and cons of either uh, swathing or straight cutting. Yeah, um, so for sure, the pros of straight cutting is, uh, you know, you only have to go over the, the field once with one piece of machinery, which is really nice. Um, and 
and you do tend to get a little bit more yield out of those varieties when you let them mature um, fully before before cutting off the plant like it you know if you're swathing it you're shutting down that plant a little bit early and those top pods don't have as good of a chance chance to fill um, straight cutting you know waiting for a crop to come in can be can be difficult to you know you keep driving by it and it keeps staying green and and uh, you know so straight cutting has that challenge of you have to wait a very long you can sometimes have to wait a very long time before you can get in there and combine it and and it can slow down the operation and and mess with logistics in that sense um, the benefits of swathing is you have that even maturity um, you know you're not waiting for green areas to come in you've killed all of the plants at once when you go in there and swath it and you know that in two to three weeks you're going to be able to go in there and you're going to be able to combine that and you're going to be able to get it in the bin um, obviously the biggest risk with that is if you wait too late um, you are going to have some loss um, some of those pods uh, are going to split open and you're going to lose some of that seed so um, that would be the biggest risk with swathing and what about producers over i used to live in alberta uh in the claire's home area where uh, i joke that it's the bermuda triangle of weather where you can get some pretty strong winds um in those types of areas is swathing recommended when you know you live in windy country for sure yeah so that is uh definitely another thing to consider um you know, if you do live in windy country, it can be pretty risky. Um, if you've got a good uh, tall stand of canola and you're able to leave some of that stubble and, and then use a swath roller to push that, push that swath in, it, it really mitigates that risk, but it is still always a risk. Um, we know what the wind can be like in the prairies and, and it can pick up those swaths and that's definitely something to be considering. Um, and then also, so uh, is there ever a scenario, when is it a good idea to swath a straight cut variety or to straight cut a swath variety? Yeah, um, so I think the biggest times that we would see somebody um, needing to swath a straight cut variety would be for uh, weeds, trying to dry down weeds. Um, if you've got a straight cut variety that's that uh, something happened and you weren't able to get in maybe with your Second Liberty app and, and you've got some kochia that's got away or some lamb's quarters. Um, those are really tough plants to dry down even with a desiccant, especially in, in a canola crop where it's hard to get coverage and hard to dry down those weeds. So one of the best ways to dry down weeds is to cut them off and they'll start drying down on their own that way. Um, so that would be one of the cases where you might swath a straight cut variety. And, and you're really safe in doing that because, because it has that pot integrity. So, um, you know, there, that's not a very risky thing. It's just that extra pass you have to go through the field. Right. And then on the opposite end of the spectrum, uh, would you straight cut a swath variety? Um, th there's not as, there's more risk to uh, straight cutting a swath variety for sure um, because you have to wait for that crop to be mature before you can put it through the combine. So you do risk that wind coming in, shaking those plants and losing some of those seeds. But um, you know, if, if logistically you weren't able to get there with the swather, um, the crop's already at 80 to 90% seed color change, you're risking that shelling already, um, well maybe you should just leave the swather in the shed and wait the 10 days that you might need to to get in there with the combines and just combine it because at that point if you come in and swath it um, you're still risking that shelling um, so in that case it might be uh, might be an option to just come in and, and combine it straight always weighing the odds hey you bet, <laughs> perfect thanks so much for joining us today Jaden you bet